Welcome to Take Your Points, episode 16. I'm Ronan Scott, and this week, myself and Cal are going to talk about the year that was, 2019. But we're also going to touch on Jim Gavin's shock retirement from Dublin, and also yesterday's Ulster final between Kilku and Neve Connell. Cahal, the boogies had it that Neve Connell were going to win, and uh, Kilku were just slight, uh, slight outsiders, but I think a good amount of people would have probably picked Kilku based on the fact that they've been there a lot more. Um, what did you think going into it? Were you expecting Kilku to win? Well, I suppose it's not often that the boogies get it wrong, and uh, I'd looked at it beforehand, and you know, Leif Collins run to the Ulster final, and you know, taking care of Guidor, who were the previous year's champions, in you know, three amazing games, and they, they looked to just be getting better and better as they ran through it. Kilku, I suppose, coming into the game, having played against uh, Derry Gonley Harps, and that was a game which they, I suppose, flattered to deceive. And to be honest with you, they were very lucky to, to get out of Armagh that day with the win. But they will probably say semi finals are there to be won. They got over the line. But I think having taken that step and uh, um, looking back, even when they played Burn and when they played Warren Point in um, Down, they were very lucky again to, to get over the line. In, in uh, both those days, but it's a sign of a good team when you can go to the well, win tight games, and progress. And third time lucky in the Ulster final, it certainly was yesterday. They were way the better team, the five Brannigans. It's amazing to see the five Brannigan brothers all starting on the team. And um, it was a great story, for, and there's many great stories from the, the Ulster final. Um, and even to do it without the likes of Adar O'Hanlon, um, who had, you know, a county star who had been injured and given so much to the team. But they were full value for their win, played some amazing um, football, even their first goal. The, the three-man weave certainly isn't dead in Kilku. And I, I know some of the guys down there and they live and breathe their, their football. I think one of the players said recently that all they have is the uh, the, the chapel, the football field and a, a couple of sheep. So, you know, the, maybe that's the, the blueprint for being successful in terms of club football. But I think the, the axe factor that got them over the line, there's been a lot made of it, um, having Mickey Moore coming in there. He's done it all in terms of football management, and I think he just provided that. I was going to say father figure, but maybe that know-how to get them over the line. Whereas before they were very, very close and probably should have won uh, more Ulster titles than what they had, given their complete dominance and down. But you know, great day for um, Ulster football. You know, best weather. You, you could have been in the in the, the mid summer, and almost not a great field at the best of times. But you know, great. Uh, to see Kilku doing it and getting their name on the trophy. Uh, that's that's right. Home <laughs> isn't the best of grounds. It was one of those ones where people sort of were expecting it going to be a low-scoring game, a defensive game. It was going to be bogged down with defensive play. But you got four goals out of it, like, and and plenty of attacking football. Especially with Kilku and Derry Gonley in the semi-final, it was very very hard to watch that day. Very defensive, but and this is maybe a hallmark of Mickey Moore in terms of his style as a as a manager. He adopted uh, adapts his system to the team that he's playing uh, and they I suppose identified um, the, the Landy's team that the way they played if you pushed up on them and you ran at them you got a lot of change out of them and um, Lafferty inside was you know brilliant and um, Johnson was probably the man of the match throughout especially in the first half he, he, absolutely brilliant and that diagonal ball, and it's no, nearly reminiscent of uh, Armagh back in uh, 02 when they played that diagonal ball. Obviously, Lafferty isn't just as tall as uh, Ronan Clark, but a very, very smart footballer and made the runs at the right time and you know very, very difficult to mark. So the game plan worked really well um, for Kilku, and I don't think some of the stars uh, in that Neve Connell team were just at the level that they, they had been throughout the sort of campaign to get there. And maybe that was heavy legs and having to go a few more games. I was going to say, do you think that it was heavy legs? Because they did have such a quick turnaround. You know, nobody predicted them to, well, I'm sure somebody predicted them to win that first round game. But to turn around in three days and win that game, then get to the final, massive, massive achievement to even do that. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe it wasn't... The, like physically, there were you know specimens of men. They were obviously had done the 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 preseason and they were in great shape for the game. But 
and it's sometimes not tangible but maybe in their head they were a wee bit tired and a wee bit fatigued to keep going keep going and keep going back to that well every time and with such a really slick and uh, good Kilku outfit it was going to be difficult if they were on uh, their game to raise to that level again and I think it was maybe just one game too much for uh, Neve Connell what, what I take from it and I there'll probably be a little solace to Neve Connell is that Donegal teams can play in Ulster. When they get out, they can get to the final. Because Glen Swilly got to the final before. Vidor got it last year. And that's, we always say, if you win it for the first time in a while, you, you're going on the beer. But they don't. it doesn't seem to affect them. They know how to continue and win and push on in these late months. Unlike counties like Tyrone, where Trillick were knocked out straight away, where they had been fancied. It's a mentality thing. And... You definitely have to make the most of that opportunity because winning the club championship in any county in Ulster is so difficult. And when you actually are presented with that opportunity, some teams actually say, you know what, I'm happy with my county medal in the back pocket and that's enough for me. It's been a great year, great year for the club. But then the opposite side of that is that when are we going to get back here as a team? Some of the older players are thinking this is the last chance. Let's really drive on and try and go for greater glory. Some of the teams that have maybe won a couple of county championships, like look at the likes of Kilku, know that there's a big opportunity there to push on and win Ulster and that should be really the holy grail. But as you say, some teams are just happy enough with their lot and maybe go out and don't play to the standard that they, they had done previously in the year? Ah, so it could be the, like the dynamic then. If you've got maybe a certain level of, or a certain amount of older players who are there, who realise we don't get back to Ulster that often, you know, the likes of Cassidy's and that would realise and the Thompson's and that would realise this doesn't come out that often, we've got to push on here. Whereas maybe in, that doesn't really always work with, with Trillick though, because Trillick's got some older mm-hmm. players there too. It's last chance saloon sometimes, and even with the younger players, you know, myself, when I when we got into Ulster, um, when I was maybe 18, 19, when the championship, I thought this is going to be easy, we'll do it every year. Yeah. But that's not how it turns out, and when you have that opportunity presented to you, you need to take it. And it's maybe that mentality of some of the players have, and like it is a long season. Some of the guys and some of the clubs are training from this time last year, and to keep going right round, and there is that massive commitment but success should breed success and when you win you should be saying right what's next and let's go and win this Ulster and I think that's certainly what Kilku um, where they were especially with Mickey Moore and he would have been drilling that into those guys. Now where does it stop for Kilku? Can they get an All-Ireland title? Um, can they even defend next year? What, where, what's next? I think they're on the crest of a wave at the minute and the the type of team and the type of guys from what I have heard and what I know of some of the players in that team that this is another step and yes they have dominated and down now they've won their first Ulster and again it's going back to that point in terms of the mentality let's go and win an All-Ireland here Mm -hmm. and there's absolutely no reason look at that core Finn team you know amazing football team and they play some brilliant a brilliant brand of football and it's you know it's really good on the eye but they have been to the the well a number of times and there would be a lot of miles in some of those legs as well they've obviously refreshed it and come out of connect again but i wouldn't fear them if i was kilku at this stage and looking at the likes of nemo rangers I don't think they were really up to, uh, against too much yesterday and they've shown maybe in terms of the finals that they have been to that they can be got at and they can be beaten and who comes out of Leinster probably uh, Bolly Bowden again a good team but pff, I don't think Kilku should fear any of them and they should grasp this opportunity yes when an Ulster is great but would an All Ireland title be great? And you don't often you make you can't be sure that you're going to get back there. Well, they know themselves. Been trying for ten years to get to Ulster. Yeah. Let's take this other step. And I'm sure, yes, they're having a few beers today, and they're, you know, they woke up this morning with that feeling that Ulster champion. But they'll also be saying, you know what, let's go and make even more history. Mm-hmm. A big surprise for them. Uh, well, not a big surprise for them. Big surprise for some that they won. But the other big surprise this week was the departure of. The double manager Jim Jim Gavin, which you, I'm sure a lot of people took a second take when they saw saw him going. Did you were you surprised to see that that news come in? I was shocked, I have to say, 
given the success and given that he, when you turn on the TV or you do, you think of anything to do with GAA, his name is synonymous with the accident, synonymous with that Dublin team. And now that he's actually stepped away, and I was thinking about it in terms of the timing, I think was maybe the biggest shock for um, a lot of people, including myself. But when you actually analyse it a wee bit further, where does he go from here? You know, where is the next mountaintop? And now maybe not to get himself motivated, I'm sure he can get motivated to go and win another All-Ireland, but having created history and being managed a team that's won five All-Irelands, and you think of the time commitment and everything else that's involved in that, and also the mental uh, commitment that he has to put down, his family life, you know, career, and all of the other interests that he has. When you actually think about it, I think this was a good time for him to step back because what you don't want is to be that old um, uh, great boxer who was a great and you know left the sport too long and he was beaten by a journeyman or something like that there. You never want to, to leave it too long so why not go out on top and that's what everyone wants to do. So he's had a fantastic r run, he set the bar so high in terms of management, in terms of excellence in the GAA and I wish him all the best. There's questions now about whether um, he's leaving for a reason and that he maybe perhaps sees that maybe this team can't go any further with him or they maybe are on the wane or maybe he doesn't feel like he can't take them any further or perhaps that he maybe just wanted to get out. Uh, you know, do you think that there, maybe there's, there's signs of weakness there? Maybe they're not signs of weakness, but teams might see it that way. Yeah, well, certainly if I was in Donegal, if I was in a Mayo camp, if I was down in Kerry, I would be thinking, you know what, the door's just slightly ajar now. Um, this Dublin team were bulletproof for five years there under his management and everything was, I suppose, the minutiae of the preparation and when you actually think about those All-Ireland wins, two replays got over the line by a point in a number of the games and there was that wee small differences that he made as manager and obviously the players, you know, he never took the credit for the, the wins, it was all down to the players but he set the standard, he set the culture and that enabled them when they went to the trenches and when they had to really suffer to get over the line, they had that in the locker. So without him, will they be as a ferocious an animal to face? Possibly, they still have the players there, but ultimately if I'm across the sideline looking across and Jim Gavin's not there, that's going to give me a bit of hope. Mm -hmm. These players are brilliant no matter what managers are on the side, but players do are affected by the manager and, because, and you could probably say the Mickey Moran situation sort of suggests that, that if Mickey Moran's on the sideline, the team is more than likely to win. Um, so the, the, not having Jim and Gavin there will be an issue, but they're still good players, like it's still a good team. Yeah, well, ultimately, I haven't seen any managers kicking points or, uh, to win in All-Ireland, and that's what it comes down to. But in saying that, and I think uh, all successful managers, what the, the constant theme throughout that is that they lay a platform for the players to be their best. And going down, looking at all the great managers, Brian Cody's, etc., they set a platform and then intensity in training to produce the best out of each of those players. Now there were great players um, beforehand that came through that Dublin um, with that Dublin jersey on that couldn't quite get over the line. Um, and then with Pat Gilroy I suppose changed that culture, set that standard and Jim Gavin pushed it on to another level. So yes they'll still be great players but then the question is the hunger, the question is is the culture right and has the platform be based for them to go and win another All-Ireland. Winning five in a row is just, you know, it's crazy to think about what is involved in doing that there. Six in a row, you know, you have to go back to the well. You have to think, right, let's go and win another one. With a different voice in the change rooms, it might actually help freshen things up. You know, bring in that interest, bring in new uh, players to um, add on to that intensity in training. Because, like, a lot of the leaders in that team, uh, you know, have moved on. The likes of Bernard Brogan, etc. But I just think there is that mix of the great players and the great manager that is now gone and other teams will be stepping up another level and I don't think with that decision at the weekend that we'll have someone new on the Sam Maguire come next year. Mm, okay. So let's look back at the year that was 2019. Where does Dublin success rank um, in terms of highlights? For me, 
it was the obvious highlight. I was actually watching the game on you know, a personal level. I was uh, in um, Monaco at the time, which is an odd place to watch a, a, an All Ireland final. But to see them do what they've done and to constantly come back with that level of excellence, you know, it's never been done before in the GAA when we look back. So it has to be not only the highlight of this year, but one of the defining images of the GAA full stop. And you can only take your hat off. Forget about the resources, forget about the, the chimney pots in Dublin, etc., etc. The brand of football that Dublin team played, the example that they set for young players and also for other members of the GAA, you know, has to be applauded. And for me, that was certainly uh, my highlight of the year. Mm-hmm. In terms of Ulster, what, would, what do you think we'll, we'll remember most about 2019? I suppose what ifs maybe is what we will, will remember. What well look at Tyrone, where they got to, maybe left it behind them when they had an opportunity to to push on against Kerry, and it's going to be that case of almost there but not quite, and going back to the drawing board and reassessing where they are from like looking at Tyrone's point of view whether it looks like Mickey Hart will be back for another um, season, but with that Jim Gavin thing we've discussed, maybe a fresh uh, voice in the change rooms might be something that can push them on to that extra level um, and get to an All-Ireland and actually get over the line this time because I think they do have the players. If you look at the likes of uh, Donegal, again, what ifs there, played some amazing football and with Michael Murphy being the fulcrum of that team and the culture was right, but I suppose a couple of injuries at the wrong time with like so and Bon Gallagher getting injured, which was a big part of that team, meant that when they went down to Mayo they and on a really turgent night that they just couldn't get over the line then and they had played some amazing football. The one game actually that stands out in my mind is the uh, drawn uh, Donegal and um, Kerry game in Crow Park. That was an amazing and Michael Murphy just he gave a, a, an exhibition that day. So some I think there's a lot of positives there. My own county played a lot better this year and you know gave a good showing in terms of the Ulster Championship which was certainly missing for a lot of uh, the years and give a bit of hope to the supporters you know it was good to see back in Clonus with the jerseys on and the, the numbers going to it and a lot of the uh, Armagh supporters are fanatical about the, the, the team so it was just good to see the, that there in the likes of Derry with the changes with Rory Gallagher there's a lot of upheaval when he got appointed so see where that um, takes them and I think Fermanagh under Ricey will be again a slightly different animal maybe play a, a brand of football that's a wee bit better with a couple of guys returning there so I think it just sets it up when we look back and then we're thinking you know we're looking forward to next season already with the McKenna Cup I think 26 days away so it's been a great year again in terms of the the GAA and it still has its issues as we've discussed many times on this show but you can only but get excited about a 2020 season. Whenever you look back, whenever you say there was a season of what ifs in Ulster, probably right, but there were, like, when you say, talk about Fermanagh, when you look back at Fermanagh's season, they were expected to not, you know, they were expected to get relegated in the league and they stayed up. They almost got promoted. Like, that's got to be one of the big stories of the year. It is, but when I think of Fermanagh, I think of the football they played and maybe that goes against them slightly. Mm-hmm. And it was very hard to watch at times and it has been hard to watch for a long time but the Fermanagh guys will say well we were expected to get relegated, we stayed up, we were very competitive, we could have um, got promoted and playing another brand of football going one on one with teams maybe doesn't suit the personnel they have and they played to their strength and played to a system that gave them the best opportunity to win but I suppose the what if in Fermanagh is what if we actually went and played some football and we weren't as negative and hopefully under McManaman we might see that uh, next season. I remember at the start of the year uh, uh, Nan McCoy wrote a piece in Gaelic Life about the forwards. The interview was about taking the pressure off the forwards like oh man need time. Mm. Do you agree? Do you think they get will get the time because that we've got that year passed you think they still need more time? My personal opinion is that 
what are you waiting for, guys? Here, you, there's pressure if you're playing an inter county at any level, um, and you're representing your county, whether it's in Armagh, whether it's in Antrim, etc. You're expected to um, turn up and produce. I think in our mass especially, some of those forwards are potentially overhyped, and there's been a lot of talk of them from underage and and have failed to produce. And I think at club level, um, you can score one six, one eight, and look great. Uh, and then when you actually step up to the county level, it's a completely different game, and the the, the pressure being put on, especially in that defensive mix. So. I don't think you should be making excuses for them. Now is the time that they, and last year as well, that, right, it's time to deliver here, guys. And in Tom Al, Real O'Neill did deliver to an extent, but we need a lot more than him producing. And I don't know whether they're just as good as what is good enough to win Ulster and to push on. Like that Calvin team, yes, they are a well-drilled side, but I don't think they're the best footballers um, uh, in Ulster, but again, it's it's those percentages and those margins. But I think the time for excuses for those players is over, and it's either deliver or don't. That interesting you mentioned Kevin because like the, the Kevin success, I had been expecting them to succeed for years after their under twenty one battles mm. with Tyrone, those five years, and then also also Donegal, but they never ever it never came came to be. You know, they it's almost like what happened like you know, Gary McKiernan like they, they never really pushed on um, because it's probably the attitude like you don't you need to have the right attitude to make it at that very top level I think it's about culture as well I remember going back to when I in 2005 when I played with Armand Miners um, that Calvin team Kim Mackey played on uh, the minor team for Calvin against Down and they went to in the Ulster semi-final, there was three games and Down just about got over the line. And then we played down in the Ulster final in Crow Park and beat them by a point. Went out the next day and Mayo beat us in the All-Ireland quarter-final and the Down team went on and played Galway and beat them. And then they went on and won the All-Ireland. And that Calvin team then was kicking the ball away from winning an All-Ireland, like with Down and Marty Clark had playing that day as well. So they do produce good teams and good individuals throughout the years, but they never seem to be able to put it all together. And I think it's maybe that cultural thing as to changing the culture. And I know Marty Bellin went in there and there's been a number of managers, even at club level in there, that have said that some of the players it's just very hard to get motivated to buy into the collective as opposed to the individual and I think that yes there's some good individual footballers the likes of Gerard McKernan you've spoken about but they seem to get to a certain level but not actually get over the line to actually win an Ulster that would be a massive for them win an Ulster and then to push on from then. Yeah if, if they got that one win perhaps that would make the difference. What what are you reading into uh, Maliki O'Rourke's departure from Monaghan this year because apart some might have thought that was a surprise. I think it was a surprise, but for me, in terms of where Maliki took that team, and they had great success, like um, Desi Moon has retired, but the Hall of Medals he had coming from Monaghan, and this is not being disrespectful to Monaghan football at all, but during the noughties, I suppose, where Arma and Throne were on top, and if you were to say that Monaghan were to win the Ulster titles that they have done, and to be as successful as they have been, I don't think anybody would have put them up there, but Maliki Rourke has come in, changed that culture, pushed them on to be in the Calvin type of team, you would have put them in a sort of similar bracket to them, but to push on and to win Ulster championships against the likes of Donegal when they were in their pomp, so I think they've done really well, Maliki Rourke, is much sought after manager but I think the pressures of family life etc and he's been on the road for a long time as well and I think he needs a bit of a break but the the likes of any Corey retiring and Desi Monaf have spoken about that'll leave a big hole in terms of that uh, Monaghan team because they were very much the leaders of the team but I think Monaghan will still remain competitive uh, next season but whether they'll actually achieve that silverware without Maliki at the helm uh, remains to be seen. Okay. And just finally, what do we think of Tro? Uh, what did you take from their season? <sighs> Almost what ifs could have been. I still think they have the players to um, to win in All Ireland, but it's maybe going back to that cultural piece. And it would be my view 
in order for them to take that next level or next step over an Ulster, over an All-Ireland semi-final and to actually kick the door through and to win an All-Ireland, they need to replace Mickey Hart at this point would be my view. The, the, there's a, a clamour in the county for the likes of Liam Donnelly to maybe take over and that fresh voice and uh, different ideas in the um, change room I think would help them get over that, uh, get over that step. But the other thing is the offensive mark has come in and for a long period during the league with Mickey Hart, they used it to good effect with uh, Matty Donnelly and Cal McShane up front. So maybe he has something in the locker that he's going to surprise us this year with. But I think with Matty Donnelly's injury, they need him to be leading that team and to be fully fit in order to have a chance of doing anything. Yeah, the, McShane's discovery, well not discovery, but you know what I mean, like he came out, of, he, he, he sort of caught fire in the league because of that offensive work was great, but it's going to be um, tempered by the loss of Matty. Though, though there's those that say that Matty, the system they work in will adjust to a, to a life without Matty? Yeah, well, I think maybe he put his brother in there. You know, it's not yeah. completely like for like, but Callum McShane, if you, you go back to um, when he played for St Mary's um, in, and when they won the Sigerson, I think it was the first Sigerson in a generation, uh, and he was one of the leaders and the great players in that team. And I think that they really give him the confidence to actually push on and to turn into the great player that he has done, but he's obviously done a lot of work uh, away uh, on his own to actually step up to the stage he is. I think physically he's done a lot of work, he's a lot stronger. He's not the tallest guy in the world, but under a high ball he's very, very hard to dispossess and rightly so, he won an All-Star this year and it'll be interesting to see can he ne take that next step to become one of the greats in Tyrone or will he be, yes 2019 was a great season, but he never actually got to those heights again. Okay. Uh, looking back, do you think it was a season that will be remembered for its club football or its county football or, you know, if we're talking from a football perspective? I think it'll be a season, well, the, the club football isn't just finished yet, but mm -hmm. I think some great highs and lows in both and that's why we love the game and that's why we love Gaelic games in both the hurling and football we talk about a season of Sundays and there's been some amazing um, scenes, there's been some absolute heartbreak. But that's why we come back every year and that's why we love the game. And I'm just looking forward to the All-Ireland semi-finals now, see where Slack Neil go. We haven't really discussed them, but I think they have a massive chance of winning an All-Ireland club, having played against them myself. And uh, Bally Hale obviously are going back to the well to win it again. But I think it's going to be an amazing winter of um, club games uh, at all levels, junior, intermediate and senior. And that'll bring us back into the county season again. So it's just the uh, great days and a great time to be a, a GA man. Just before we go, what did you think of the season from Hurling? Because casting your mind back, it was Antrim perhaps didn't do as well as we had hoped. And well, if you're from Antrim anyway. Um, and there wasn't really a pile of great stories, you know, other yeah, I think in, from an Ulster perspective, maybe the hurling wasn't as successful as it has been. Orma again losing another. Uh, Nicky Rackard final, um, Derry and Down did okay. Down getting to the Christian Ring final, I think was, the, I suppose, the highlight. Antrim really stuttered and played in fits and starts and had some good results, but never actually got to where they, they want to be. And I think they haven't played against the Antrim guys. They do have that arrogance and that you know they do have great players but lately they haven't actually turned that into the results that we, you would normally see against the likes of the West Meath of this world and they haven't been able to take that step up and I think on an individual basis they have some of the players which are as good as anybody in, in Ireland but they just haven't got that mix right to actually take that next step and I don't know if it's some players that aren't maybe making themselves available for selection and now it's time to push on, but whether they have the players to do that, it remains to be seen. Okay. I think that's probably enough for this episode and this year. Um, we're wrapping up for the year now. Um, thanks for all your time, Cal, on the show. Um, it's thanks been a pleasure. Me. Thank you. Pleasure's all mine. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for watching and listening. Um, we'll see you again in the new year.